What's up guys, it's King Josh back with another video and today I'm going to show you guys my new build. As you guys know, I have a 99 overall offensive threat build. It's actually the finishing and shooting pie chart, not the play sharp one. And I decided to remake the archetype so it could have more defense and it's pretty much the same thing but it actually is called a scoring machine now and I did change my takeover to slasher takeover. I also changed some of the attributes, like as you can see it has a lot better defense than my other build. But as you can see at 99 overall, my shot close is 94, which I don't need that much, but that can definitely help. My driving layup's an 89, which is good. Driving dunk 87, which is great because I can get all the contact dunk packages. Standing dunk is 62, which isn't the best, but I do get a lot of standing dunk animations when I'm in the paint just standing there. So that's helpful instead of just getting layups and getting blocked. And then post hook is 52. Honestly, I would have kept it down, but I just upgraded it for the finishing badges. And now into the shooting, I have an 88 mid range, 87 3, which is actually really easy to green with, especially because my shot meter is off. A 92 free throw and a 94 post fade. And this 94 post fade is low key underrated. Like, I don't do it that much, but it's definitely nice to be able to score from the post. Now going on to passing, I have an 83 pass accuracy, 86 ball handling, so I can speed boost at 99, and then 47 post moves. Now going into defense, I have 81 interior defense. Hold up, hold up. Yo, what did my boy just say? Can somebody please rewind that? 81 interior defense, 81 interior defense, 81 interior defense. Boy, if you don't get... 79 perimeter defense, 77 lateral quickness, 76 steal, 71 block, which is pretty good because when I jump to try to contest some shots like layups, I actually get blocks every once in a while. And then my rebounding, as you can see, it's not that high. 34 offensive and 39 defensive rebound. And if you look down at the physicals, that's another thing I changed. On my 99 offensive threat build, I actually had 75 strength. So on this build, I just wanted to be fast, just so I could dribble a little bit faster. So I have 93 speed, 96 acceleration, 62 strength, 87 vertical, and 99 stamina. Now going into the badges, I actually lowered the finishing and playmaking badges, just so I can make my defensive badges a little bit higher. And I do have the same number of shooting badges as my other offensive threat build. When it comes to finishing badges, I think contact finisher and slithery finisher are for sure the best ones. Then putback boss, I have that one on bronze because if you don't have it, you can't even get putback dunk animations. So that's more for mixtapes and for fun and stuff like that. It's not really a necessary badge. And same thing with Lob City Finisher. It's not the best badge, but I have it just in case somebody throws me a lob. I don't want to just be jumping and not grabbing the ball. That's like a free two points. Then Acrobat, I have Bronze. That's kind of where my extra badge goes. I might take that off just so I can put Giant Slayer Hall of Fame. But I don't know. I kind of changed my badges a lot. Not really the ones I have on, but like the tiers just to try out different things. Consistent Finisher is pretty good for me because I don't use a meter. Honestly, I might take it off because now I've gotten a lot better at timing layups without a meter. But when I first took the meter off, it was pretty hard for me to time layups, so consistent finisher definitely helps with late layups and early layups. And then Giant Slayer is also an amazing badge, especially when I try to get contact dunks on big men and it turns into a layup. That'll make the chances much higher of the layups going in. So now let's go on to the shooting badges. When it comes to shooting badges, I like to have as many Hall of Fame badges as possible, so I think the best shooting badge is probably Quick Draw Hall of Fame. Second best, I would go with Green Machine. Then next, Hot Zone Hunter. It kind of depends on how you shoot in park because I used to not use this badge before I didn't have hot zones when they made that patch to change it and whatever but now I do have hot zones so I actually have this badge hall of fame it's a great badge then I have range extender hall of fame honestly I might put that to gold just to put deadeye silver but I don't really take that many bad shots so that's why deadeye is on bronze and then as you can see in the top left I have catch and shoot hall of fame onto the playmaking badges I have bailout bronze this is actually a really good badge especially for slashers then I have Handles for Days and Quick First Step Gold. These are probably the best two playmaking badges for guards. Then I have Unpluckable Silver, which isn't the best badge, but if you don't have the badge at all, it's going to be pretty easy to get ripped. And then I have Tight Handles Gold just so I can get some ankle breakers because the actual ankle breaker badge is pretty bad. Now onto the defensive badges. I'm still experimenting with them a little bit. I know I'm going to keep Clamps Gold always, but with the bronze badges, I have Intimidator and Interceptor. Honestly, I might try out like Pick Dodger, Pick Pocket, maybe even Tireless Defender because I do get pretty tired on defense, but these are my defensive badges for now. Also, as you guys can see right here, this player is 6'5", just like my other offensive threat. But I decided to go minimum weight just so I could be a lot faster, so I could have 96 acceleration. Because the only thing that a high weight gives me is strength, which I don't need that much. Surprisingly, you don't need it that much for contact dunks. At least not as much as previous years. And then interior defense also is what weight helps with, and I don't really need that because I'm a guard. If you guys don't know by now, my physicals are higher than normal because I do have the gym rat badge. And the way to get this badge, I think you either have to hit Elite 1 or just win an NBA championship. 
I'm not 100% sure if the rep is elite one to get it. I think that's it though. But the best way to get it is by winning an NBA championship, which is pretty easy to do. So I just did that and it boosts all your physical attributes by five. So you never have to go to that Gatorade practice facility again. Now going out to the animations, if you guys want to know my jump shot, make sure to go to the bottom of the description and there should be a link to that video. My free throw, it's not that important because I don't use it for park, but it is Kobe Bryant. It's probably the best free throw in the game in my opinion because I've been using it since NBA 2K16. For my dribble pull up, I have Steph Curry. It's actually very fast, but at the same time, it's very smooth. When you do put it on, it might be hard to time, but if you do master it, it'll be very easy to time. And because it is fast, it's very hard for defenders to contest. Now going on to the spin jumper, I use normal four and this one is actually very slow, but that's kind of good because you can tell a lot easier than the fast ones whether the defender is going to contest the shot or not. So if you see the defender in front of you by the end of the animation, you can just pass out really easily. And if they're not there, you can just pull the shot. So that's pretty easy. I think this is the best spin jumper in the game. I don't do hop jumpers that much, but I do have normal 14 on. I'm not going to say this is the best one in the game because there are other good ones, but this is the one that I use for now. Going on to post fades, I use post fade three. Once again, I think this one is the best in the game easily, much better than all the other fades. Even if you are a guard and even if you can't post fade, I would probably put this on just in case you ever post fade by accident or whatever. It's just good to have just in case. When it comes to hook shots, I use post hook three. For post hop shots, I use post hop shot one. I think this is the best in the game, but also post hop shot seven, eight, and 10 are also really good. So I would try out either one, eight, seven, or 10. Just see which one you like best and just use that one. For post shimmy fade and post shimmy hook, I actually use number three. And I'm not gonna say it's the best in the game because once again, I don't use these animations that much like the post hook, but here they are. Going on to the dribble style, I'm not gonna say this is the best one, but my favorite dribble style is Kyrie Irving. It's just really smooth and really fast, and I like it because of that. Now going on to size of packages, as you can see, I tried out all these size of packages here and the John Wall one at the bottom. I don't know if there's really a best one because they really have pros and cons, like this Curry one is pretty good. And I'm, I'm not sure which one, but either the Curry and the Harden one, those two were my favorite, but one of them, it did have better dribble moves, but then the escape on it where you hold R2 and move the R stick down, that move was like really bad. So honestly, I'm still deciding between Curry and Harden. I just need to try them out more in the park. I'm not going to say these are the best ones, but Steph Curry is the one I use for now. I might end up switching to Harden, but we'll see. For now, I'm just going to use Steph Curry. For moving crossover, I use Pro 2. I think this one's the best in the game. For moving behind the back, I use Pro 3, and Pro 3 and Pro 6 are both good, but I think Pro 3 is better just because it's faster. Pro 6 actually creates a little bit more space, but it's kind of slow, so I would just try out Pro 3 and Pro 6 and see which one you like better. Now, going on to moving spins, I like Pro 4. I don't do spins that much, but this one is very fast, and there's one good animation. It actually popped up before when I was talking. There it is, that animation right there. It's pretty good, it's pretty fast, and it kind of like slows your momentum down so it can trick defense pretty easily so if you're looking for a moving spin I would definitely choose pro 4 going on to moving hesitations I like pro 1 because you can do the hesitation and then you can just dribble right out of it like if the balls in your right hand and you do a hesitation you can just run to the right and it's kind of like a little speed boost I'm not sure if you need 86 ball control to do that move you might just need 70 but regardless I think pro 1 is the best moving hesitation and then for triple threat styles honestly it's not that important all the moves are the same it's just like the spot where they hold the ball. As you can see right here, the ball is against my player's chest. But then if I go to normal two, they hold it low down. So I like WNBA two because they hold the ball really high and it kind of looks like it's actually gonna trick defenders. And normal two, the ball's just gonna be low. It's not really gonna do much for you. So it's not that big of a deal, honestly, but I use WNBA two. I think it's the best one. For layup package, I use long athlete, which sounds pretty weird because a lot of the NBA layup packages like Steph Curry and Jamal Crawford, those are really good. I used to use the Russell Westbrook one because that layup package has a lot of contact layups. So this one's also pretty good, but long athlete is really good when it comes to hop steps because there are some animations that make you hop really far. So if you're the type of player that likes to do euros and hop steps, I think long athletes, the best layup package. If you're just a slasher, I think Westbrook is the best layup package. And then if you're not a slasher and you don't really do hop steps, I would try out Steph Curry and Jamal Crawford. So now to talk about the dunks, as you can see, the green ones are the ones I have equipped. I'll just tell you guys which ones I have as flashy dunks and which ones I have as dunks to be safe that don't get blocked a lot. So we're going to start with clutch reverses off one. This is just the flashy dunk. So I'm not going to say like this is the best in the game that I have all the best dunks in the game. I have some for flashy like this one. Baseline clutch reverses. This one is also flashy. Baseline reverses off one though. This is one of the best dunk packages in the game. I think it's the best baseline one to have. So on any player that you have, this is a must have dunk. 
Same thing with sidearm tomahawk. If you dunk with the right stick, it's really easy to control if you dunk with your left or right hand with this dunk. So I would definitely have baseliner versus off one, sidearm tomahawk. Straight arm tomahawk I have as well. It's kind of like sidearm tomahawk. It's not a must have, but it's a really good dunk. Then windmill reverses, this one is definitely flashy as you can see. And then same thing with leaning windmills and basic 360s, those are just flashy dunks that I have. Just because I have 87 dunks, so I can get a lot of the good dunk packages. But if you're not a slasher, if you can't get all these good dunks, the must have dunks are baseline reverses off one, really good. And then sidearm tomahawks are really good. Straight arms, not a must have, but it's also really good. And then one dunk package I actually forgot to put on, quick drops off one. This is also a must have. This is really good when you're trying to do conservative dunks and just not get blocked. For those of you that don't know, this is going to be my main guard build now. I'm not really going to use that offensive threat much anymore unless I need like shot creator takeover for a mixtape or something like that. But other than that, that build is done with. So my main builds are this 99 scoring machine and then the 99 interior finisher that I have. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like. If you want to know more about this build, if you have any questions, just comment them below. I'll get back to you. Also, make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel. It's been King Josh and I'm out. Peace.